had to go I put seven Don't touch me so When you kiss me I'm in a trance I must get free From this romance This kind of love Makes me afraid It's like a from London has to be taken to Hangar 7. The company wants us to make a complete check of the equipment. It needs to be pulled. Yeah, I just got the order. I better tell the captain to move it off the runway. How long before it's back on the line? Oh, the general maintenance will take a couple of days. All the seats have to be refitted. As for the engines, I don't know. They're not my department. This morning we finished the complete overhaul, which only took a couple of weeks. But this is a new plane. The work should go much faster. You'd better tell the captain now so we'll get through the formalities. They're tough around here. Yeah, you're right. So long. So. Are you sure that's yeah. all? I would have sworn you were trying to smuggle something in. All right, we're through. Just sign here. An authorization to remove 12 seats to be clean and reupholstered. Thank you. Well, good night, Santos, and be good. But the next time you make me work late, you'll have to take me out and buy me champagne. That's a deal. This morning we finished a complete overhaul, which only took us a couple of weeks. I'm living. 
Sir Henry Forsyth of Lloyd's of London. I have an appointment with Mr. Cobras. Do, Harry. I don't like to keep him waiting. Oh, they didn't tell me anything. I'd better call them. This way. Must be some kind of trouble down at the main gate. There goes the alarm. Go take a look. We've locked every entrance to the factory. Whoever it is won't be able to get out. Upper seven. I knew it. Check the electric security panels.
Oh, it's you, Captain Finney. I didn't recognize your face. Cobra's got away. I've been after him for quite a while. He's been trying to smuggle gold. You'd better phone in another report to London. The leader of the gang is Cobras. It was a close call. This time, he nearly got me. Come on. My men, they don't know you're working for me. Thank you, Chen. I always enjoy having a personal escort. A pleasure. It was Burkett who phoned us of your encounter with Upper Seven. She had good reason to save you. L'amour. Mm. You're a real Cuban. It was my duty. You happen to be an important figure in Operation A. And my government wants to make sure nothing will hinder the completion of the operation. Did you let them know that the gold exchange had been postponed? We are planning to make several important transactions with a major power. And one of them is particularly interesting. Yeah, what is it? I am not at liberty to speak, but for the time being, I can say the principal gold could amount to more than a billion dollars. In other words, it's more than we need for Operation A, isn't that right? As for the intricacies of the planning, they'll be left entirely to you. But I'm warning you, it will be very difficult and will require great stamina. My government wants to make absolutely sure of your physical ability to do it. I'll be happy to prove I'm not the kind who just sits around an office giving orders. I'll give you a chance right now. A while ago, I taught you a particularly difficult movement in karate. A grip that few people in the world are able to execute at the proper speed. For the rose with three cents. Also, the grip of death. panel invented by some of my talented collaborators. We installed it only as a precautionary measure. We can proceed to discuss some of our problems now. Let's start with the most important one. Upper seven. Gotta get Upper Seven out of the way for good. To kill Upper Seven, you first have to identify him.
London. I thought you were in Paris, modeling a new collection. Oh, I'm semi retired. Uh-huh. Nice. Congratulations. I don't believe you looked me up in Paris, considering how many times you stood me up. No, I've just come back from the Middle East. Ah. Have you picked up the ways of a sultan, or would you invite one woman to dinner? <laughs> For you, I'll make an exception. Tonight at eight? It's a date, and this time I won't be late. Ciao. <laughs> Conquering hero. I couldn't stay away from you for another minute. Now, now, don't get carried away. Has Sir Harold arrived yet? Oh, so you're the one who asked him here. The old man's been sitting with him, not knowing what to say. Just wait till you see how I liven up the party. May I ask whether Lady Mary has recovered from her illness? Yes, thank you. The country air did her world good. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Excuse me, sir. Paul Finney would like to see you. Show him right in. Sir Harold, would you excuse me a couple of minutes? One of our agents has just returned from a difficult assignment. Oh, Paul Finney. I've met him. Sir Richard. Hello, Finney. My best, Sir Harold. It's a pleasure, Mr. Finney. Well, I hear you had a nice display of fireworks in Copenhagen. My congratulations. Excellent work. Oh, it wasn't terribly hard, sir. I put on one of my new masks and walked into a gold mine. As a matter of fact, your masks even fooled me. Just this morning, I refused to give money to a beggar in the street. The way she was dressed, I was afraid it might be you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been known to pass for nobility as well. No, no, you'll have to prove that. In fact, if you have a minute, I'll demonstrate it for you, with your permission. If you have business, I'd better... No, stay here, Sir Harold. I asked you here this morning for a good reason. In a way, you might say that you're personally involved. Oh, it's not possible. I can't believe it. Why, but I haven't been there for nearly four years. It's a mistake. It can't. I believe this is another of Finney's jokes. Like it? I've never seen anything more amusing. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. Mr. Finney, you are able to get them to give you the account books. Oh. Incredible. There's nothing more secret in my entire organization than those books Mr. Finney's thumbing through. <laughs> Thank heavens he doesn't work for the income tax people. <laughs> it's amazing. They all mistook you for me, Mr. Finney. The entire staff, even those who've known me for years. <laughs> Why you even had me fooled for a couple of minutes? Good show. I hope you forgive me, Sir Harold, but I wanted to convince the Chief to let me make use of my new disguises, to be able to act as another person. Of course, all in the line of duty. All right, all right. Fantastic, Mr. Finney. Simply fantastic. Please forgive us for delaying you, Sir Harold. We realize your time is terribly precious. I enjoyed it tremendously. Congratulations. I guarantee you that no one will ever know of this little subterfuge. Thank you. I wish I could use a mask like that. I'd be able to stroll down Piccadilly across the most beautiful girl, and my wife would never know about it. Goodbye, Sir Harold. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Finney. Well? All right, Finney. I'm willing to grant you that the likeness was perfect. But not to the point of making you change your mind. That's not it. I'm conservative. For me, it's all too theatrical. Movie tricks. This is a crucial matter. In this business, it's much better to remain anonymous. So far, none of our enemies has a clue as to what I actually look like. Cobras, for example, would give us two eye teeth to find out which of us is really up a seven. Cobras is an obsession with you. He's got away from me twice already. I have the impression that Cobras and, and the gold smuggling are connected with something bigger. A little drink? If you really think... Very well. You want our permission to use your masquerades. All right, Finney, you have my authorization. At last. But take my advice. A vacation's what you need. Why don't you take a week off? There's nothing important happening now. Nothing except for a little loan of... about a billion dollars from the United States to an African country. Considering that transaction is top secret, how did you... Oh, I have my ways and means. 
Well, what else did your informers tell you? That South Africa is going to pay the equivalent amount in uncut diamonds to the United States government. That's all. Neat, huh? Cheers. There isn't very much one can add. South Africa would like to finance a new alliance of African states to make sure that the new countries who gain their independence don't flirt with the Chinese, which they keep threatening to do every day. The money is to be deposited in a reputable bank in Basel. It'll be exchanged for the diamonds at the American Embassy in Rome. It's very simple. I hope you're right. I wish I could help you out, but as you said, I'm on vacation. I've always been curious. Why didn't you become an actor? You would have been good at it. I prefer a nice, steady job with nice, steady pay. You know how women are. They prefer security. <laughs> <laughs> you retired well. <laughs> it's my fiancé. He's away on an election tour. He's old but generous. <laughs> What'll it be? Uh, Scott. So done. Thanks very much, but I prefer it straight. Straight from the bottle. That's how I am. I think I'll go and take a bath.
See you tomorrow. I insist on it. But you promise to come this time, or will you stand me up again? Well, if I do, think about this while you're waiting. Final sent to us by the Ministry of the Interior. Duke Rubin, born 1920 in New York, is pranked at high school of no interest to us. Here, sentenced in 1936 for participating in the raid on the Rebel Jewelry Store in Paris. Paroled and sentenced in 47 for burglary. He was a member of the Banda Gang, specializing in robbing jewelers. In addition, the report says that Duke Rubin is one of the most competent cutters of diamonds and precious stones in the whole world. He reputedly can render unrecognizable even the most famous stone. In other words, what they call a profession. Yes. To find the connection between his vanishing and the smuggling of the diamonds between Rome and Johannesburg is a problem that even your housekeeper wouldn't have difficulty solving. <laughs> well, put her on the case, then. In view of his spectacular disappearance, I assume there's only one explanation that Cobra's organization had a hand in his escape. A natural assumption, only a bit obvious. Why would he be so stupid as to challenge the CIA so openly? In other words? In other words, there's another explanation. They're leaving us a trail to follow. A false trail. Oh? On second thought, I think I'd better go keep an eye on that billion dollars. The CIA would never agree to it. One of their men's already stationed in London. And what's more, remember one thing. The loan's been promised to the government of South Africa. Then I'll go to Johannesburg and score up the diamonds. A present for you, Upper Seven. Happy birthday. Explosive? A specially made compound of plasticine. The fuse is under the buckle. Uh, after you pull it, how does it explode? By self-combustion, after a few minutes. One of Roger's little inventions. Very practical. Yes? Excuse me, sir. Shall I show in the agent from the CIA now? Yes, please. Oh, no. If you're thinking of changing your belt, 
You'd better wait a couple of minutes. Reasons of secrecy? No, for reasons of decency. How do you do, Miss Fahrenheit? This is Paul Finney. How do you do? The young lady is working for the CIA. She's to escort the money to Basel. Finney is in charge of the diamonds. He'll be leaving immediately for Johannesburg. Thank you, but I've been given detailed orders from Washington. You will have to get together on the date of the exchange, which will take place at the American Embassy in Rome. If you have any questions to ask me, please do so now. Any questions? Hmm. Wonderful. In that case, my job's much simpler. I'd like to see you once more before you leave town, Miss Fahrenheit. That's all, Finney. Huh? Yes. Shall we? Uh, goodbye. When do you want to talk about the diamond transfer? Immediately. How about discussing it over a martini? Where can you get a decent one in London? My place. Bye, Molly. So that's your idea of Upper Seven, huh? Pretty close. You see, I made sketches of those parts of a face a man could easily disguise using makeup cleverly. The beard, mustache, then I tried to subtract those features he couldn't hide and drew a composite portrait. Mm -hmm. I think we better distribute copies to all our agents in South Africa. Only don't forget, Upper Seven most likely will have a new disguise, not to risk being recognized. Look out for his ebony cane. It's his secret weapon. He won't get away with it this time. When he finds out Rubens escaped, he'll head for Johannesburg. Here is the issue we printed in 1956. So here's the way. These are the last ones we printed. We found a way to speed up the aging process. Mm. Nice work. Even the treasurer of the U.S. would accept them. Remember, by tonight the work has to be finished. <laughs> when I was a kid, I always wanted a dog. Everything's settled then. Ken is already operating in the experimental zone. You and Santos will take off right away for Johannesburg. Right. Tomorrow. I'll be driving up too. spy with a rubber mask. Oh, is that the reason you scratched my face? Yes, a trade secret of mine. I was convinced only the Secret Service knew of my disguises. Before coming here, I looked up your record down at CIA. I was... I was always interested in men with haunted looks. I really interest you? Yes. Come inside. You'll think you walked into a wax museum. I ought to make you buy a ticket. Well, this is the den of the man of mystery, up the seven. You're the first visitor. These are a few of my future subjects. For the time being, they're only clay heads in which I'm going to model the masks with a special synthetic rubber. Sometimes I add a mustache or a wig. I can even change the color of my eyes. Oh, and if you can keep a secret, I'll show you two of the finished ones. Look. Incredible. They look almost alive. I have a feeling I've seen that man's face. Who is he? That's Cobras. One day soon, I might be using it. And that one there is Santos, on your right. It's so realistic. It's almost like magic. No, no, it's not as easy as all that. Mainly just hard work. I've dabbled a bit in sculpture, as you can see before you. That was some practice with makeup. Oh, well, if I have any makeup problems in the future, I won't fail to call on your services. You've got very lovely features, but they could do with improvement. Such as? Here, hold this mirror. You should wear your hair down. There, that's better. And your eyes could do with a darker shade of mascara. Seems quite obvious that the vampire is more your type than I am. Wait, I haven't finished yet. Let me examine your mouth. That. In fact, very nice. Indeed.
Mm. I'd like to check your cargo, right? Open it up. Oh, toy dogs. Very cute. I say, tomorrow is my little boy's birthday. Is it possible to buy one too? No. Uh, well, you have to unload the whole truck to be inspected. Here's one as a present. You mean it? Shall I take it? Go on. Oh, thanks. It's no use wasting time checking through the rest. Everything seems to be all right. And this is your receipt. Don't lose it. You're sure to be wanting it again. Right. And thanks again. Hans, did you check the invoices? Let him go. His papers are in order. Good morning. Not for your kids? Give me five tomorrow. All right, you can go. Also of particular interest is the new system of filtration designed to disinfect the drinking water, which begins in this very section and by a series of pipes is transported underneath the run. They then converge in this section. Purification of the water is carried out by the latest and most scientific method. On the other side, passenger boats can pass freely. To get beyond the dam, the boats have to wait for the canal until the river reaches the surface. city to visit some of the more important historical monuments. This way, please. Hurry, ladies and gentlemen. This way. Attention, attention. This is Radio Boston. We repeat our message. The strange epidemic appears to have struck particularly the central areas of the city, the business district, the streets of which are linked by a series of canals connecting the water ducts coming from the north. We recommend the utmost caution. At present, the number of deaths is very low and is not actually traceable to the strange phenomenon. The Department of Sanitation has been unable to cast any light on the mystery and warns the public to refrain from drinking water, as this appears to be the cause of the epidemic. The symptoms are numbness of the senses and a very heavy drowsiness, after which the patient suddenly falls asleep, as though struck by sleeping sickness. It is still not known whether the phenomenon is due to natural causes or is an act of sabotage launched by an unknown power. Citizens are requested to keep calm, remain indoors, and follow the instructions which the Department of Sanitation and the Board of Health will issue from time to time. Attention, attention, please listen carefully. We shall now repeat our message.
How did you manage to get in? We have to take samples of water for lab analysis. The commissioner gave us a set of keys to get inside. I guess they got permission from the city board of health. They didn't tell us there would be a guard here. Did they give you the vaccine? No. It's like candy. Just let it dissolve in your mouth. It doesn't taste too bad. You better get going now. If you have a minute, could you show us the way to the reservoir? It's that way. Another sad victim of the epidemic. Come on. But the only way we could get you into Basel was to make a detour of the drylands and then across the Rhine. The city is closed off. No one is even allowed to leave the airport. Well, let's go to the bank anyway. The bank is closed, but I think we can get in. The whole city is paralyzed. It's a disaster. If only you could have waited till the epidemic was over. Anyway, it won't take long. Luckily, I never drink water in the morning. For my breakfast, beer, that's all. And as for lunch, beer. And that's the way I like it. If it wasn't for the beer, I wouldn't have been able to come and get you at Dreiland. I'd have been sick like the rest of them. Yes, beer's the healthiest drink. The manager of the bank was taken ill too. When he was told that you were arriving early this morning, he became very upset and immediately ordered a complete inspection. I opened the strong room myself and everything was in order. He's American too, the bank belongs to him. Did you notice there's not a soul in the streets? They say there's quite a number of deaths, a catastrophe. But as far as your money is concerned, it's as safe as ever. We'll be there soon and you'll be able to see for yourself. Looks like it's all here. For a minute there, I had a feeling. I was afraid that international thieves might be trying to take advantage of the fact that everyone was sick to rob the bank. Thank you. That's impossible. Our safes are impregnable. That's the principal reason everyone brings their money to Switzerland. Anyway, to celebrate, I'd like to offer you something to drink. Naturally, you mean beer. <laughs> uh. 
Thomas. Thomas is one of the chief guards. Looks like he's another one who's been struck down by the epidemic. Thomas? Why? He seems to be dead. <laughs> It all went as planned. Mm -hmm. I wrote down a list of the banks in Switzerland where we rented vaults and have secret accounts. So we can start to deposit the money today. You know what to do. I'll phone in that Operation A has been carried out. I'll also mail a report on the experiment with the virus. Oh, have you news from Johannesburg yet? Mm -hmm. I'm positive. My plans will work there just as well. I'm going to teach Upper Seven a lesson he won't forget in a hurry. I can't tell you how glad I am to see you, Finney. It's quite a relief to know that you're the one they've selected to escort the diamonds from here to Rome. Oh, thank you, Major. And have you decided on a date of departure? The diamonds aren't in Johannesburg. The official orders were all prepared in Cape Town. They'll be sent here for our OK, and after that, it's a direct flight to Rome. Cape Town? Is there any news from down there? Yes, sir. I've received a message from the Ministry of the Interior that they would like you to pay a visit there. The police have discovered something which they are certain will interest you. Uh-huh. <laughs> him a few days ago he's been acting very suspiciously we figured we shouldn't take any chances right now because of the diamond transfer he fits the description your office sent us so we thought there's a chance he might be Duke Rubin every day he gets there about the same time he lives in a hotel near the port alone he doesn't even seem to have any friends here we've been watching all of his movements in Cape Town while you were on the way here is that the man as sure as I am myself and as sure as you're yourself. Reuben looks like he's waiting for someone. I think he's waiting for me. Maybe we've an appointment.
I was right. It was upper seven with that cane of his. Poor Freddy didn't even know what hit him. Did he see you come here? Fine. You'll get a nice surprise. There's someone coming this way in a motorboat. He looks like a skin diver. Okay, him on the radar screen. It's up at seven. The Duke was just liquidated by Santos. They've been scouting with a radar set. What else did you find out? It was a trap. When I approached the island, they were there waiting for me. And nothing led you to believe they were after the diamond. Nope. Yeah, that's the strangest part of it all. There's something about this I just can't put my finger on. Do you think we should ask the embassy to have the date of departure changed? No, the money's been sent to Rome. It's too late. Anyway, maybe in Rome we'll have a surprise. Excellent work, Captain. 
Unfortunately, the special cargo you were carrying went completely unnoticed. You may give orders to your men to start unloading the boxes. I see the truck is already waiting. Helen. Darling. I'm disappointed. I thought you'd meet me in your usual way, moustache, cane, and all. Yes, but I figured that in my disguise, I'd be too easily recognized. No, excuse me, this is Major Gibbons. This is Helen Fahrenheit of the CIA. She has got the money from Basil to Rome. Happy to meet you, miss. Your job will soon be over. I'll feel a great deal more relieved when the money is safe inside the American embassy. <sighs>
Yes, I think I'm all right. And the diamonds? Well, I suppose they're in the American Embassy vault. If nothing else happens. Yes, we better go see. He wasn't after the diamonds. He was after me. He wanted to kill me. And instead, he got Gibbons. You mean he's... Yeah. What happened with the money? It's also in the Embassy vault. Everything go all right? Yes, but in Basel, there was suddenly a strange epidemic. Yeah, I heard about that. Did you check the serial number of the bank notes? No. Ah. Well, that's something we better do now. Sorry about poor Major Gibbons. The diamonds arrived safely. I have them placed in the underground vault next to the boxes with the money. Allow me to present Captain Paul Finney. He's from India. It's a great pleasure. I understand you're in complete charge of this operation. Whenever you think we're ready to begin, I'll notify the ambassador. The other parties are here and are anxious to get on with the proceedings. Oh, one last check and we'll get down to business. I think you ought to tell the ambassador that way you may have to wait. Oh, and would you apologize to our guests and tell them it's just a matter of a couple of minutes? There. Ah. I'm sorry, Helen. It's just as I thought. I better phone the old man in London. What? You mean those dollars are counterfeit? We're dealing with espionage agents. You think their only goal is to try and hinder the creation of Pan-Africa? It's quite clear that if our friend Cobras is engaged in this, he didn't get involved completely for himself, but for a foreign country attempting to further its interests in Africa that are totally contrary to the interests of Pan-Africa. If that money had ever reached its final destination, it would have provoked a total war throughout Africa. Yeah, yeah, a type two time bomb for new countries only. I need more time, Sir Richard. I must go up to Copenhagen. Someone gave me a lead on Cobras. Except that I've got to delay the exchange a couple of days more. You must find a reason you're an old master at making excuses up. <laughs> you like, I'll send another report and make it sound very official. I'll put that in it too. Huh? I should take care of Helen. I'll remember to follow that order faithfully. Goodbye, sir. Helen. <laughs> you mustn't let this thing affect you like that. It could happen to anyone. Cobras is an old hand at this. The only way to deal with him is to kill him, and soon somebody will kill him. You wait and see. No. It isn't just the money. I was given a job to do, an important job, and I failed the CIA. They had the money planted there before you ever got to Basel. All you were to do was to escort the money and make the transfer, right? Can you take me with you to Copenhagen? <laughs> I have a surprise for you. Wait here. And no peeking, huh? How do you like it? <gasps> Don't be afraid. It's my mask of Santa's. It's the first time I've tried it on. In a way, I'm glad you jumped. That means it really works. Well, if you were trying to find out how scared I can be, you succeeded. What's the matter? Paul. Take off the mask, please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Checking all the details may take a little time. I'll notify your office when everything is ready, sir. find the body of Paul Finney in the Temple of Venus. I thought it would be a beautiful place to die. See that all the papers get the story. Also, all the press agencies that deal with Denmark. Tell me, Paul. Why do you want to do this alone? It's so dangerous. Tell the police in Copenhagen about Cobras and they'll arrest him. His sabotaging the Pan-African Union can only mean that he has a powerful interest somewhere in Africa. I've got to find out exactly what country he's working for. I'll approach him disguised as Santos. I tell you, it sounds too risky, Paul. What if no one believes that story about your death in Rome? What if they should hear about Cobras? Ah, right? if luck's with me, Cobras won't hear about it. But I've got to confront Cobras and find out what his real plan is. It's also possible that the counterfeit money was just to throw us off the track. Cobras has all the answers. I've got the feeling that behind it all is an organization that's a lot bigger than just his gang. An oriental country which is working in Africa. Yes, and not just for Africa. Here we are. Try to keep them calm at the embassy. In case they want to arrange a funeral for me, I don't like roses. I'll call you soon. Bye. Good luck. Hello, Santos. Good work. We got the merchandise. Now all we have to do is send it to Ghana. He's in there. Ah! Fine work, Santos. I just read the news from Rome. It wasn't an easy job, but you handled it like an expert. I'll pay you an extra large reward for getting rid of Upper Seven. In genuine dollars, naturally. Talking about dollars, where are they? Because I'm taking them. Upper Seven, huh? I want that money, Cobras. 
It's, um, in Switzerland, hidden away in safety deposit boxes in different cities. Some in Basel, Geneva, Zurich. The keys are in this box. And also the documents that go with them. I'll take it. Another question. We know you'd like to see the Pan-African Union break down. Why? What are your plans in Africa? Who are you working for? I have no boss. I work alone. And I know nothing about the Pan-African Union. The only thing I care about is the money. Well, in that case, why did you switch the counterfeit dollars for the real dollars in Basel? You had no reason. <laughs> Great and invincible upper seven. And now just look at it. He's helpless. And we can do whatever we want with it. Get him out of there. I don't want him to die just yet. He'll go with us to Ghana. All your suspicions about Africa were correct. I'm sorry I didn't tell you more in Copenhagen, but the plans we've made are so beautifully thought out that I wanted you to see for yourself. We're near Kumasi in Ghana, where we're planning to construct a base for long-range missiles. It'll be the first one in all Africa. <laughs> you don't know it, but the pendulum is beginning to swing the other way. Balance of world power will very soon belong to the country that has authorized this little operation. But don't you think the Western powers will react to all this? At that point, the problem is out of my hands. But I don't think the West will be too happy when they find out the last phase of the project was entirely financed with the help of their own dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't imagine they will. Nevertheless, you could have simply stolen the dollars. Well, that's right. Only planting the counterfeit dollars makes the United States lose face. And when that happens, the entire Pan-African alliance collapses and there's nothing standing in our way.
All right. You walk behind them. If you have any ideas about escaping, these will prevent you. These are guards that never sleep. Congratulations, Cobras. I assure you, my country is happy to have Upper Seven out of the way. And even more important, a valuable source of information is now in our power. He's very tricky. I advise you to keep a good watch on it. My country is most anxious to find out when Operation A will be ready to go into effect. I said I'd need to wait for you. I didn't want to give them an answer until we had discussed it. I have gone over all our plans. They should be ready at the date we had scheduled. First, you'd better let me check the instrument readings. You'll be glad to know a friend of yours is here. Paul! Helen! You will see her again, and now I think you should try to get some rest. You'll have to wear these for as long as you're here. three months, the launching pads will surely be completed. That's one month more than we thought it would take. We could have been finished before this, but we need more uranium, and it'll take a couple of weeks to get it. At the most, a month. I've already ordered our men to withdraw the dollars from the banks in Switzerland and use them to purchase the uranium. I'll make a full report to my superiors. I shall leave first thing tomorrow morning, and I shall also take up a seven, along with the girl. I think they'll certainly have some interesting things to tell us. All right. We can get along without you. I have full control of this zone.
go back to work later. After all, I'm still a woman. of the whole place. Put your hands up. Come with me. Good girl. Take the fuses out. about half an hour before it goes off. Infrared beams they set off the machine guns. Put these on so you can see them. You thought I was here before? Why, yes. Upper seven. That little tin box, where is it? It was right over there.
That signal means the pressure's risen. He must have set a time bomb in the generating room. Hop on to your post. The place is going to blow sky high. Let's go, hurry! Come on. We spent many years of work on this operation. You can't abandon it now. You must locate the bomb in the generator and eliminate it. If I thought there was any possibility, I'd have done so. Only I'm certain that if I did locate it, I wouldn't have time to put it out of commission before it goes off. We must get out. There's no other choice. Afterwards, we'll rebuild the project. I prefer to die. And you are going to die with me. You don't seriously think that I can go back to my superiors and tell them we have failed. All right, let's go. We don't have much time. acting like a fool. I'm not upper seven. I had to kill him because he tried to stop me from leaving. Upper seven planted a bomb in here. The place will blow up any second. We've got to get out of here immediately or else we'll blow up with it. Oh, it really is. You aren't going crazy. I can't tell you from upper seven. <laughs> Give me your goggles. Uh, if I can cut the infrared beams, it'll set off the machine guns. That's it, Upper Seven. Go ahead, take the car. Go into the city. Tell your chief that you've blown up our base. It all seems so easy, doesn't it? Ah, only I'm going to kill you before you can make it. But first, where's the tin box? You haven't got it. Now, of course. It's with a girl. Oh. <laughs>
made it. We got to Russ. Oh, Paul, I was so scared. It's finished. Forget about it. You'll be glad to know that everything went smoothly and the dollars are safely on their way to Africa. And none too soon. The deal almost fell through. But never mind. All's well that ends well, as the saying goes. I see you picked up a beautiful suntan while you were there. Naturally, your job's so much healthier than mine. Fresh air, traveling. There are times I wish I could change places with you. Well, say goodbye to the ambassador, would you? And the next mission I'm set on, maybe you can come with me. Goodbye, Mr. Finney. Goodbye, Miss Fahrenheit. Ciao. Come back soon. You've got a flat tire, left front. Get it fixed in a hurry. The traffic's very heavy here. <laughs> oh, you think it's funny, huh? Let's see your driver's license. What's the with the hotel? That's so. I'm very sorry. Have a cigarette instead. All right, you and your girl. Come with me. We're going to police headquarters. Hello. 